Hello everybody, it's Zach Faden 07 with another video. Uh, this time we are playing some uh, Blue Red Prowess. Uh, so this list uh, is uh, very similar to the usual list but, uh, you see uh, in um, MTGO League results and uh, preliminaries uh, and uh, challenges. But uh, there are some changes uh, to the list, some uh, cards I really wanted uh, to uh, play in the deck and that uh, don't see play like uh, a Stormwing Entity, 4 of instead of a uh, Sprite Dragon. So no Giganta on the sideboard to be able to play the Stormwing Entity. I think uh, this is like the Stormwing Entity is really the card. I would, uh, uh, I like, um, I like having it, I like playing it. I think uh, it has a uh, Potential to uh, kill opponent uh, faster than with uh, uh, than with uh, Sprite Dragon. Also, the Sky Three, uh, Sky Two on uh, Enter the Battlefield uh, is just uh, too uh, find. I find it too often very relevant, and I really like the ability. And uh, it's uh, already three, three three when you untap on your turn, where uh, when you play the Sprite Dragon. On uh, turn turn uh, two, uh, you can attack for one, of course, uh, but it's uh, dan uh, often dangerous to play it uh, just like one one without bubble or uh, mutagenic growth or something, uh, because you risk uh, your opponent playing the brand, killing it, or playing um, uh, playing uh, lava dart, whatever. Even it, uh, it's it's uh, a um, it's a har harder, let's say, on turn three to p protect it against Bolt. You need to have a uh, mutagenic growth. Uh, when, if you let's say play the entity on turn three, you can hold one mana uh, to 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 cast the spell if needed. So, uh, in that situation, you can try to save it. Um, so, okay, that's it. And I really liked the entity in the league I played. I finished the 5-0. Uh, we'll go through the through the matches, see uh, see all the games, see how it performed, especially uh, the entity. So uh, some other changes to the list. There is only uh, to the usual lists uh, standardized. Let's say there is only uh, two light up the stages in the list. I usually see three, but I think this card is uh, very often very awkward, and the deck uh, has a lot of um, grinding involved already. And I really don't want to uh, don't want to draw multiple of the of these. So I I think uh, I think for my taste, uh, two of them it's uh, it's kind of perfect. Uh, to have and uh, one gut shot in the main. Uh, it's uh, eight spell, uh, eight free spell that helps us cast the entity uh, on turn two. And with eight spells, I find it uh, pretty consistent to be able to do this. So um, uh, also in a lot of situations, I it was like better play to cast it on turn three, turn three because in a lot of situations I had. Uh, more aggressive hand with playing the second uh, six spear or just playing two channelers and bubble doing the double surveil if like that's what i needed at the moment uh, stuff like that so uh, i never had uh, problems casting the storming entity uh, in this deck not now and not when i played it before so it's uh, it basically never never happened uh, with, uh, in my experience with this deck uh, that you have problems casting uh, this card in this shell. Okay, uh, other than that, uh, other than uh, light to light at the stages, uh, of course there is uh, four expressive iterations in this list and one of Underworld Breach as another uh, card advantage card uh, that can uh, easily finish the game with uh, mutagenic growth. Uh, uh, in uh, in the graveyard and or gut shots or bubbles or whatever these free spells are uh, really important uh, for interaction with breach on the, that large turn you can easily just uh, finish the game okay so uh, on the sideboard of, of, uh, no giganta and i would say this is a typical sideboard but i really prefer the two two split of these uh, counter one mana counter magic 
So uh, I play uh, two spell peers, I play two cluster storm, two invasive surgeries. Okay, so uh, the, all of these cards are good against uh, different uh, different archetypes, like invasive surgery is good against cascade, it's good against uh, creativity. And in these matchups, you will also bring in uh, the fluster storms, so you kind of don't really need the pierces, and the fluster storms are better uh, in that matchup, while a pierce will be better against um, against the deck uh, playing. Uh, uh, <clears throat> playing uh, cheap, uh, playing non-creature spells early and uh, just uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> playing this on the on the uh, removal spells, playing it on the planet walkers like the fairy, like uh, Vran, uh, whatever will be uh, pretty good. Um, but uh, <clears throat> also. Uh, uh, Fluster Stones obviously can be used in that manner, and uh, Pierces are in some situations just better than those. So uh, I really like uh, the split, and uh, you will often uh, just uh, either uh, will want these two spell Pierces or the package of four of these, or sometimes package of four of these without the invasive surgeries, if you're not playing against uh, uh, Cascade or Creativity. Uh, so uh, I really like uh, this kind of split and it feels really good. Uh, I don't really like uh, versions playing four spell peers. Uh, it's, uh, it's, for me it's uh, very awkward in a lot of situations to bring, bring in uh, four spell pierces. This, that is, this spell pierce is a very good card that can uh, often be uh, uh, often be uh, dead uh, because it, if you don't kill your opponent in the first three four turns, then um, it can be uh, it can be pretty bad. Uh, so, um, but uh, yeah, on the play it will definitely be good. In uh, on the play it will definitely be good. In more situations where on the draw you sometimes won't be able to hold uh, mana for peers pierce early and not being able to stop removal on the channelers or whatever and if uh, they kill your threats early then the game will prolong and uh, in, in these situations you definitely don't want to have uh, four spell peers in the deck and uh, having uh, so many uh, dead draws uh, so I just I prefer having the two of these, and if I if it's a matchup I really need uh, that kind of effect. Uh, these are situations where I probably can, uh, where probably Fluster Storm and Pierce are both uh, equally good, uh, or at least uh, very similar. So I can always bring in four of these spells in uh, that kind of situation. So you're not missing on anything. Um, uh, so other than that, we're playing some typical stuff on the sideboard. The tree and holy heat. Uh, we get the delirium criticus instantly because uh, of the bubbles, free spells, and chandlers. So uh, obviously, it's better to have bolt in the main to be able to go face, uh, but which is what you do uh, very often with this deck. But also, heat uh, can be very useful as additional removal for larger threats like. Um, uh, Ledger Shredder gets out of board range uh, very early. Uh, Tarmogoyfs, uh, then uh, Territorial Cows, whatever. And uh, of course, there is some uh, Artifact Hate. Uh, I chose Shattering Spree in my version, and you will see how just how good was it against Hammer, drawing multiple sh Shattering Sprees, which uh, dealt with uh, three, four artifacts at a time completely destroying my opponent's uh, board uh, board state and uh, I had one uh, extra space available of course I forgot the vapor snacks vapor snacks are pretty good in this shell just being able to uh, have a solution a tempo solution for bouncing the merc tides or some blockers whatever uh, your opponent losing one life in process can also be meaningful and that's it. After doing the sideboard, I had option to play the fourth Shattering Spree. I didn't think it was needed. Uh, and uh, I had uh, one more slot. Uh, so I opted for to go for Bedlam Reveler. This uh, card uh, can be uh, easily replaced. Uh, easily replace some of the cards. 
uh, in the main as one off like some situations gas shot will not be good you will want uh, some, just some uh, a good card in your deck not changing the deck too much bedroom level can be a, a, a great additional threat against decks that don't pack a lot of uh, graveyard hate um, there's no point in uh, playing the second breach over the reveler on the sideboard because if your opponent uh, sees the breach and the uh, channeler they'll probably pack some um, uh, more uh, graveyard hate and uh, at least in some situations if they're playing artifact at, uh, graveyard hate they will often hold it uh, until some moments so you can uh, in this process you can uh, try to fill your graveyard and then um, play the leveler before they exile uh, exile some spells so it's uh, and uh, it's definitely I think better than to come out uh, from the board than second breach so after the, to play uh, the bedlam reveler as a one-off I also like wanted to uh, test it unfortunately didn't draw it uh, that much didn't see it much uh, in this league uh, but I kind of liked the idea of having uh, one uh, extra threat uh, available on the field in some uh, in some matchups. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, uh, we'll just uh, go through the leagues, uh, check out the matches, and uh, they're pretty fun. So uh, let's check those. Okay, this was uh, this was the league. This uh, was the first match. Uh, I didn't play a Provost uh, for some time. So I remember in uh, one of the leagues, I had uh, I had one mediocre play. Not greatest play anyway. Okay, okay I went for Manamorphos here. Uh, uh, to see my draw before I play anything, I played both of my threads and decided to go for the mutagenic growth immediately. My opponent is already on turn 13, 13 playing the paladin. Uh, I just wanted to get rid of the Paladin here, and uh, I was okay with playing the light up after the combat. Uh, so uh, find additional uh, channeler on the top, and uh, having pretty good chance to uh, to uh, kill my opponent on the next turn. That was it. They didn't find what they needed, and uh, I was a turn too fast for them to get a Shadow Spear. So that was game one against a hammer time opponent uh, just the usual uh, gameplay with I, uh, I have a hand with a lot of removals so I decided to keep it I had the solution for everything uh, vapor snag if they uh, equip early bolt to try to kill in response to uh, their uh, to them casting also shattering sprees if th things get out of hand, so I actually had solution for everything here. As you see, I just didn't care for them uh, equipping in the response because uh, I had uh, very nice solutions for all, all of this. Didn't want to waste Shattering Spree at this moment, so I just bounced the Esper Sentinel because I was expecting for them to uh, make a token next turn, so uh, they wouldn't be playing uh, Esper Sentinel next turn anyway, so Vapor Snake was. Pretty decent uh, decision here. Okay, they uh, went for the construct token. I had two removals, so I decided to kill uh, both of them so they can't get the value out of uh, Sigarda. I did this because I still had a lot of uh, removals uh, in hand, like a Shattering Spree, Vapor Snag, and another Expressive Iteration. So I was pretty confident I'll be able to get rid of, uh, of these cards. I drew into another Shattering Spree, so I was pretty comfortable in casting this for uh, three, uh, destroying three artifacts and paying mana for this extra mana for Sentinel. I uh, killed 
everything that matters at this moment, both of their creatures, so they can't, so they need to find another creature to use the Atarka better. So uh, I play a blocker. If needed, I have the Vapor Snack to deal with the Forge Tender. Of course, if they had uh, the Blacksmith skill, um, it's not greatest for me, but uh, I have the Shattering Spree for the next turn, so I'm kind of okay still. Okay, of the uh, as expected, go for the Burenton equip, and I decided to, in response to Sentinel, to bounce uh, bounce the Forge Tender. So, um, they don't get draw a card. I play my second Shattering Spree, uh, destroying all meaningful artifacts, paying one mana for Sentinel, leaving two drums uh, on the field. But everything that, danger, that was dangerous for me in this moment, I destroyed. Um, I had another expressive iteration in hand, uh, so to find uh, more threats or more removals, whatever I need uh, uh, most in this situation. So uh, I was now able to um, start casting my spell supplying pressure. I got uh, another soul scar, another removal uh, for my opponent uh, if needed, of course. I played a third mana morphos this turn, my soul scar and the sea were now large. I was pretty close to the kill. Uh, my opponent had the block plus pets, so I didn't do any damage, but still I was uh, in a pretty good spot. Um, Unfortunately, uh, my opponent uh, had the Burnton uh, Forge Tender, and uh, I don't have a solution for Sigarda Aid, and the Shattering Spree is a sorcery, which means in any situation, if they draw uh, the Colossus Hammer, the game is over for me. So I was just trying to uh, apply some more damage here, but my opponent find the Stone Forge, find the Hammer. I can block this even if I have the blocker, so uh, that was it, uh, Forge Tender. Uh, won, uh, won him this game. Uh, pretty close one, if my opponent didn't have that pet to exile, they would be dead. But they had it. So, uh, okay, so this time I boarded uh, a lot of stuff in and uh, I didn't... Uh, I showed you uh, the best version. I think it's in my opinion, but actually in the version I used uh, a uh, version I used in this league, I had uh, one Reveler in the main instead of the four entity, but that was just for fun. I uh, really think that uh, fourth entity is better than uh, first Reveler in the main. I just wanted kind of to try that card again because I didn't play it uh, in a long time. So that's why you see it here. Okay, my opponent, uh, it's... It's difficult to play against multiple Esper Sentinels, definitely. Uh, okay, I just play. I just play the Esper Sentinel, trying to kill the second, uh, trying to find the removal for the second Esper Sentinel, which I did find, and uh, my opponent just three cards uh, in this moment, and I uh, had a lot of uh, solutions here. So I decided to go for uh, a Sispear, go for the Entity, my uh, Entity finding me uh, two good cards on the top. Okay, so uh, they find Shadow Spear, I just didn't care for that, uh, I was going for the kill uh, this turn. So I kill uh, the Shadow Spear, uh, I kill this, sorry, kill the Jump. Uh, give them additional damage, put them on 3 life, which means they have to deal with Entity uh, to not die. And uh, I would be able to, in this situation, to cast a Reveler on the next turn for 2 mana, but it wasn't 
important, but it's kind of a, it's kind of a deck that uh, doesn't. I expect it to go a little more controlish, and I expect them not to have some great amount of graveyard hate. So I expect uh, Reveler to be pretty good, and uh, it can be additional creature after you. Kind of, it can be really good after you play the control game. You kill or your uh, opponent stuff, use a lot of removals, then just play Reveler as a very good threat that draws you, uh, refills your hand, draws you additional removal, and can just be really deciding. It wasn't important in this match, but if my, op if my opponent wasn't, uh, if I didn't have such a good hand, it would be pretty uh, great here. I would put a very uh, strong threat on the field uh, that uh, draws me three cards, which is really, really good. So, uh, I think uh, it's a pretty decent one-off for your sideboard, but uh, fourth Stormwing Entity is definitely better uh, for the main in this version. Of course, if you're playing the Sprite Dragon and uh, instead of Entity, it's okay. And if you're playing Gigant on the uh, sideboard, it's okay. I just think if uh, so many decks uh, use Giganta, Giganta is a great card. I uh, played a lot in the in Zoo. Uh, zoo decks and it's really great there I very often use it it saved me from Blood Moon uh, in a lot of situations and also it can be a finisher very important finisher but there's just so much going on in this deck uh, that uh, so rarely you get a chance to put it uh, in your hand and uh, even uh, when you do this uh, uh, you never uh, really get to play it because uh, uh, in 99% uh, of situations uh, you always have some card draw uh, going on or some uh, better play and uh, it's it definitely feels like a more losing play to try uh, to go for um, uh, Giganta here then in some other decks. Uh, I as crying upkeep uh, kill the go zero one golf uh, play uh, play the Sispear start attacking my opponent. Uh, they were on Junt. Uh, I went for iteration, so pretty nice start. Had enough of threats, had the other entity in hand, so I just wanted to play my soul scar, play the bubble, get uh, the Delirium uh, get the Provost Trigger, uh, which I did, I was able to do this, attack uh, for 6, hold the dart if necessary, but the uh, uh, plan was definitely to uh, go for the Soul Scar. My opponent uh, makes the token, I decide to use the dart from Graveyard to immediately kill the 1-1 one -one token, before uh, it becomes bigger. Okay, so they make an, another on their turn, find the Haywire Might, which was perfect for my uh, second uh, Lava Dart. So I played the second Lava Dart from hand, uh, then being able to just play the Entity uh, for next turn, but actually really close to kill uh, now, and I find the Bolt, so uh, that was it. Uh, my, it was uh, enough damage, and my opponent uh, conceded. Uh, that's it. Uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, which... Okay, this was game one. Uh, something happened. I need to quit this game before... Okay. This is it. Um... Okay, that was uh, game one against Junt. Game two, I had a lot of these 2-1 uh, scores. Uh, I kept a really mediocre hand. But I was on the draw, so it was kind of okay. Uh, I found my entity, which was perfect for my hand with Manamorphose on turn 2 and being able to protect it with 2 mutagenic growths. Unfortunately, my opponent uh, finds the soul, my soul scar of the top. Uh, I just go for the Morphos. 
once this was like one of the best uh, plays possible in the modern. I had uh, I had the vapor snag. I had two mutagenic growths to protect my entity. Uh, my opponent uh, goes for uh, Inquisition, so they saw everything I have, discard the iteration. I didn't want to block uh, the soul scar because uh, I was planning on a vapor snagging uh, the soul scar back into my hand. I decided to. Uh, I, I used the mutagenic, but I forgot. Uh, I forgot. Didn't really play this for a long time, so I forgot uh, the damage will stay on my creature. So it was pointless uh, savings, but uh, never whatever. I was uh, in an okay shape, but unfortunately, my opponent had this uh, hearse on the field, growing bigger and bigger. So it was just a matter of time before my uh, opponent will be able to. Uh, to try uh, equip it uh, with the Shadow Spear, I had maybe one turn to try to kill, uh, didn't succeed, so they find a creature next turn, Giganta from their sideboard, and uh, having uh, I still had a chance to kill, but uh, just didn't get it. My opponent had a curse, so the revel was useless, and uh, that's uh, that was it. When they equipped the Shadow Spear, didn't have any more chance. So, uh, yeah, that was the loss. Uh, they had uh, all good stuff they needed to win this game. I didn't play it perfectly, but it wouldn't uh, matter in the end. Uh, on the play, I'm, I think I'm really favored to win this. Okay, so I go for the Monomorphos first. Try to do as much damage as possible on this turn, and I basically uh, play out all of my hand, uh, leaving my opponent on a six life. They shocked to play the golf, so they end up on three. But I uh, find multiple ways to finish the game with the bolt and the lava dart. So uh, that was it. Okay, that was uh, game three against my uh, Junt opponent, the Junt Saga. Uh, we'll go to the game uh, three. Match three, sorry. Okay, playing uh, second again. Uh, they start with uh, Ragawan. Uh, I had the okay hand to uh, start on. The draw and uh, lava dart is always feels great against uh, to play against Ragavan. It was the uh, the eight cast deck. I cast the dart from the graveyard. Will want to put entity on the field. Uh, do the scry too. I have the mutagenic to protect it. Uh, my opponent uh, tries to ping it, and I successfully uh, do protect it. They didn't have another burn spell, so it ended up uh, pretty good. Pretty good for me. So in this situation, I played. I decided to go for the phase. Didn't just ignore the run as if it doesn't exist. I think this this was the best plan uh, at the moment. Just trying to. Uh, find something to end this game. I just attack in, in, through the air, put my opponent as low on life as possible. Um, they can go for a Shadow Spear on next turn, but uh, it's just 6-7 life. So I think uh, with uh, these, uh, many, uh, these many creatures, on the field and I can easily uh, do this. I had uh, some free spells in the graveyard, mutagenic growths, uh, I was able to play mutagenic uh, two times, which was more than enough uh, to uh, uh, to do the lethal, so that was it. Okay. 
that was uh, game one against uh, eight blast a really popular deck right now okay they start with the uh, haywire might I go for the soul scar on turn two I had the I had a few uh, good plays. Uh, I decided to uh, go with the Soul Scar, which is the most aggressive. And I did the Scry 2, putting a Spell Pierce on the bottom and another threat in a Sea Spear on top. My opponent goes for Sharpener Blast to kill uh, my uh, entity. I play uh, my channel to finally uh, finally uh, start uh, start doing the surveils. I play the bubble. Uh, see my opponent stop. Uh, play the dart from the graveyard. Attack for uh, uh, four and put myself in a pretty good situation. Uh, they had a saga of the top. Uh, which was uh, pretty cool for them. Uh, I had uh, I had a lot more stuff going on. Uh, Mana Morphos uh, into into Bubble into Bolt. All all this uh, very good stuff. Uh, very aggressive plays. I see the Ran on top of my opponent. I get uh, uh, an another triggers from the top. I attack with everything. Uh, and leave the expressive iteration at the top of my deck and uh, but my opponent was able to block one and kill the other one with sharpener blast so they survived on a decent 10 life and uh, cast advent to get another land and being able to start getting these saga tokens also shadow spear on the next turn was uh, uh, pretty uh, dangerous for me Okay, they go for the blocks. I used mut mutagenic to get as much damage uh, through as possible. Uh, I leave them on two life, but now uh, they had uh, they had the shadow spear equipped. Didn't draw into didn't draw into anything. I just needed any spell to win. Didn't get it uh, at this point. They were able to gain life. Attack, uh, put this one on the another creature, and uh, I uh, find the solution, but didn't have a blue mana uh, to kill my opponent. If I had, uh, I left uh, the Spire Bluff Canal last turn in hand because I wanted to like bluff my opponent, like if I'm holding some interaction. But unfortunately uh, for me, it ended up being the worst possible play. Uh, because I wasn't able to cast the Vapor Snag on this turn to finish the game, so uh, that was uh, that was kind of a mistake. Uh, kind of a mistake, so I was forced to play the game three. If I played uh, these games a bit differently, or uh, I could have avoided a game three in maybe few situations, but. It's okay. I decided to, to start. I had a very good hand, the multiple threats, uh, expressive iteration. So pretty good, uh, pretty good for game three being on the play. Uh, playing three threats, my opponent to deal with first. Then uh, plays their uh, channeler of the synthesizer. Decide to go for uh, Monomorphos this turn. Play the entity, scry two, and then uh, and then go for the kill next turn. I find uh, two good spells on the top of my library, two, two uh, Monomorphos, I think. So I play all of my uh, threads on the field. They were forced to use their mana to kill some of those. And uh, they're attacked with channelers, so... I had a uh, lot of these threats on the field and very cro close to lethal. So uh, I go for the 
I go for the dart to kill the uh, channeler first so it doesn't grow before I kill the Ragawan and then kill the Ragawan, attack for a lethal damage, uh, that's it. Uh, pretty aggressive, uh, turn 4 play, uh, turn, four, uh, turn 4 win. Okay, that was uh, game 3 against, uh, match 3 against uh, a blast opponent. Okay, so um, time for match 4. Uh, playing first, Mulligan Hank on 6 cards. Are pretty decent, have a turn 1 threat, uh, have a turn 2 uh, mana morphose into entity. Uh, my favorite uh, with this deck, I really, I really like this play. So, um, mana morphose getting the Provost trigger, attacking for 2, uh, playing the entity, getting the Scry trigger, and then planning the big, uh, very important uh, turn 3. Uh, which can sometimes be a kill if your opponent doesn't interact uh, too much. Uh, okay, my opponent was playing the black-white uh, uh, scam deck. I uh, I left. Uh, I had mana morphos on the top. Uh, I played uh, bolt on their flesh gorger. And play the uh, another bolt to face and uh, mutagenic growth on my creature for exactly 14 uh, lethal damage uh, on uh, again and on turn four, uh, pretty aggressive. Um, once again, my opponent didn't have a solitude to stop this. Even if they did, it would be very hard for them to survive on the low life uh, okay so game two uh starting second had a lot of threats uh in hand uh, four four uh, cheap creatures but uh, my opponent had a perfect hand uh, to deal with uh, this kind of hand i got uh, two survival triggers i got a swiss spear that's all great but uh, yeah unfortunately my opponent had the solitude ephemerate uh, which was uh, good enough to um, win this game. Uh, it, it wasn't. This wasn't the end because my opponent also lost uh, three cards in the process, so they didn't have uh, much uh, going on. Just a solid turn on the field and uh, uh, flesh gorger and the one card left in hand. So uh, I found the Bellum Reveler in this situation again. It wasn't great, but it was like a hope. I had three spells in my graveyard in this situation, so uh, uh, and now four, so really getting closer to casting it. But it wasn't uh, it wasn't perfect. Uh, it wasn't anywhere near perfect. Perfect, really. So. Uh, okay, so I just uh, now cast my uh, growth, so if I draw a land next turn, it means I can find a reveler, but uh, my, uh, I can play revel, but my uh, opponent is so far ahead, at this point I really don't have uh, solutions. I can of course survive the turn, have the darts to kill the other creature, take 6. Uh, but yeah, the Flesh Gorger is really tricky, I can't really kill it, uh, just with my creatures. But uh, it's uh, impossible to deal with them. Okay, so uh, that was uh, turn uh, game 2 against uh, Black White Scam. I decided not to keep the one lander, so I went to, to for six cards. It was okay -ish. okay keep. I go for soul scar. Again, similar situation. I can play uh, three creatures on uh, have three creatures on by turn two. Uh, risk my opponent having the uh, solitude. Uh, they didn't have it this time. I had a weaker hand, not that explosive. My opponent also used the Totsies which was uh, kind of slowing down. Uh, they got March of the top, 
So I was expecting one of the soul scars to die. I didn't have the iterations, uh, uh, breaches, the reveler, the stuff I need in this kind of situations. Didn't get them, uh, but uh, still able to um, to win this. I decide to pump my soul scar. I get uh, some more damage through uh, with uh, more foes, a bolt in hand, maybe another good draw next turn. I can probably probably do more. So I go for a bolt, a light up. I find uh, expressive iteration on top of my deck, which was uh, decent. Uh, they can discard this, luckily, and um, they play Priest with the Solitude in their graveyard. So I go for uh, I go for Iteration, I find the Sispear. I go for the attacks and my opponent decides uh, not to block it. So uh, I opted to go for uh, Lava Dart of Feast, which means they can't activate the Priest to pay 3 life to get solitude uh, on the field but they had uh, the they had uh, the persist so uh, my hope was to find a bolt with iteration and I did find it so I uh, find the bolt of the top of my deck like in so many games uh, again uh, wins, uh, wins the game and uh, that's it uh, this uh, game was the closest I think in the league and uh, now it's time to check out the last uh, last match, the, uh, the trophy, for the trophy, playing against uh, Domain Zoo. Uh, Domain Zoo, uh, luckily for me, has a really tricky um, Provis matchup. And I was on the play, uh, which uh, makes uh, me a pretty... Uh, it makes me pretty, pretty uh, favorized to win this. I went for the light up. Turn two, finding uh, two decent cards on top of Sispear and the Dart. Both uh, very useful with the Soul Scar Mage on the field. They have to deal with this before playing some creatures because these darts just uh, completely destroy them. Okay, this was uh, uh, this was uh, a guy from the Zoo Discord. I'm really active there, so we talked a bit. Okay, so had uh, it was an interesting uh, situation. Uh, they had the Sion, but uh, having uh, the Lava Dart really makes this uh, pretty awkward for them. So uh, if they if they block, they're facing uh, their creature dying. If they don't block, they get a lot of damage through. Very close to lethal. Uh, very pretty hard for them to uh, to get out of this kind of situation. Maybe their only chance was to uh, not block this entity and then. Uh, find the ley line binding for it on their turn and then uh, jump blocking the channel one of the channelers and uh, and uh, maybe drawing another blocker for the spear so that was maybe kind of a double plan but uh, yeah i had a very good attack here my opponent blocked with both creatures and they ended up dying and after that uh, it was impossible for my opponent to deal with all the threats uh, on so low, uh, when on so low, li low on life. Okay, so uh, game two was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, game two was pretty interesting. Uh, had a good start, uh, mutagenic to save my creature from bolt. Uh, I had the heat for their uh, cow or scion, uh, also iteration. Um, uh, another iteration is uh, pretty good too. I expect this game to last a bit longer. Okay, they go for um, they go for Kabu. I, I think I should have attacked here, 
but I decided not to. I should have gone for the attack. Uh, if uh, they block, I sh could go like mutagenic and heat. Now I was pretty sure they had a st uh, they were holding the stubborn denial, but uh, they decide not to attack here. I think this was a mistake. They should have attacked, uh, exiled the mistress bubble from my graveyard. It would make uh, uh, it would make getting the uh, it would uh, make getting the sorry um, uh, delirium much harder. So like this, I was able to mutagenic my spear to kill the uh, kill uh, the brawler and then uh, heat the cow, which put me in a very good uh, situation. And uh, now my opponent had the goif on the field, uh, and but uh, played the hidetsugu, which is uh, what I'm trying to. I tell to a lot of uh, fellow zoo players to be, these two cards are not playable in the in the mix because you will see why now because my opponent had the goif on the field if this creature was like uh, anything else it, they would be in a so much better situation They will be able to like uh, uh, probably uh, uh, <clears throat> they will probably have uh, the threat uh, still on the field and it would be hard for me to deal with it. Uh, I was able to get out of this situation, so I played uh, one channeler and uh, went for uh, the. Uh, a bolt my opponent had a stubborn denial here so just a gigante in hand in this situation uh, pretty good for me um, but my opponent had luck uh, drawing into Sion getting the first strike and lifelink on Hiritsugu was uh, pretty relevant so it was uh, all at once a pretty difficult situation for me I find uh, I play this on upkeep find the bolt on top uh, play the Morphos. I find the entity. Uh, I, I bottomed the Soul Scar, find the entity and uh, attack with the uh, Channeler. It was important for me to uh, bounce the Scion because uh, the Channeler would just die. And uh, continue attacking to so my opponent doesn't go too high on life with the slifling creature. So I'm able to uh, hoping to draw into something here. Uh, try to make uh, as much progress as I can. Try to find a removal. I bottom the second entity and I uh, get two mana here. Find a heat, uh, then uh, kill my opponent Sion to find the. Uh, the lethal damage and uh, that's it okay so that was the win against zoo for the 5-0 uh, and uh, i got to say the stormwing entity just was a kind of a best card one of the best cards in the deck it always felt great to cast him on turn two and three scry two uh, the scry was uh, really really meaningful in a lot of these situations in a lot of situations it felt uh, like uh, uh, really powerful it was like uh, better than drawing just uh, avoiding to uh, draw the two lands of the top of your deck which is scry to bottom and stuff like that uh, whatever the identity just felt uh, very good and uh, very powerful and uh, um, just a very very strong creature for this archetype and I'm just not sure why nobody has uh, played the entity in Proves for probably like a few years I can't remember seeing a competitive list with the uh, entity in main uh, everybody's playing the same list uh, no, I don't see anybody uh, experimenting with this much except maybe like um, changing the numbers of with the, of breach uh, breaches in a deck or uh, mutagenic growth, cut shots, uh, stuff like that. But I think just uh, 
entity is a very good option at the moment. Uh, Prismatic ending is one of the most played uh, removals in the format now. Uh, Yeskai Breach is a tier one deck and uh, they play uh, mostly like uh, three Prismatic endings in the 75 and uh, the Sprite Dragon dies to Prismatic ending and uh, Storming Entity doesn't. As I already explained, uh, Spread Dragon can be really bad uh, against when playing against Ren and Six. You got to uh, have the Mutagenic Growth, uh, who or it's um, unplayable. It's bad against opponents Lava Dart, and the Prowess is uh, uh, played more and more, so the mirror matchups can really happen. Uh, it's a really popular deck in paper because it's in cheap. Uh, this whole deck uh, costs uh, below 200 ticks to play on the MTGO at the moment. You can probably uh, go uh, even lower uh, with different uh, land choices or something like that. Uh, play the mono red version, of course, uh, which is a bit weaker but playable for the budget purposes, of course. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's it. Um, deck uh, still feels uh, very strong. Uh, this deck uh, is uh, this deck was tier one in the past, and uh, still feels uh, very strong. It has uh, some uh, new toys, of course. Uh, the breach. Uh, I some some people play more breaches in the process. I really like it as a one-off. I don't. It's a turn three play, and uh, you just saw in a lot of these situations. Uh, in uh, turn 3 or 4, you already have your opponent dead in so many ways and so many uh, situations. I just don't think it's necessary, of course. Uh, I like having this uh, maybe one off or two off. Uh, two off is also okay, as uh, it's uh, very useful in a lot of situations. And uh, But uh, kind of, I feel like I really want, want to try to go faster try to win because instantly on turn three by playing the most uh, uh, playing the best threats uh, at the moment and uh, trying to be as aggressive as possible and uh, not playing the value value breach stuff uh, uh, avoiding the late game and uh, that's it okay so I think the Yeskai breach wants uh, definitely more uh, breaches in the main uh, in comparison to this list but I also think I decided for to go with one, but uh, like a uh, second one would also be okay, and uh, probably even the third one, but uh, I think it's too much for this list. Uh, it works uh, It works great without, uh, without the breach, and the breach is just uh, extra uh, in uh, some of these games, and you can uh, very successfully uh, dig for it if you have the channelers on the field, a lot of draw going on with the durations, uh, light up, uh, scry from entity, and uh, that's it. Okay, so um, Reveler was uh, mediocre, but uh, you have to uh, uh, play this in a bigger sample to really uh, uh, get his uh, power level. It was a very desirable draw in a lot of situations. I wished for to draw the Reveler at the top of the deck, I didn't get it. But uh, in the situations I had it, it was uh, okay, but uh, not uh, not uh, game deciding or uh, very relevant. So uh, you can definitely play something else in this spot, and uh, maybe it's not needed. Uh, but uh, it was also not terrible. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, uh, just wanted to make a quick video. Uh, showing that uh, Entity is very much a playable card uh, for the Provas. Uh, I think it's a very decent option, and as I said, the Giganta is great, but like of all the decks in the modern playing Giganta, I think Provas is the deck uh, that gets the least use of the Giganta and plays it so rarely that um, just having an option to play better creature uh, which uh, can get uh, so much value uh, early and uh, uh, and it's actually uh, being aggressive uh, being uh, more aggressive and played on turn 2 than the sprite dragon in a lot of situations 
And uh, of course, there is a third option playing the third part uh, Iconoclast. But uh, so when you play the third part Iconoclast on turn two, it's very vulnerable to the Renan 6 ping, to Lava Dart, uh, Bolt, and uh, not just doing anything really. Uh, but um, of course, you can still save it with the, uh, with the mutagenic growth and uh, like any other creature, but uh, it actually doesn't have prowess, so uh, you can only save it from heat and not from bolt, so it's weaker uh, on that matter. You really just can't play it and hold mutagenic to save it from bolt, which is a big minus in my opinion. You will of course get a token, but uh, that's not good enough, so I'm not being able to hold the mutagenic growth. Uh, to save a creature feels really bad in this deck. Uh, mutagenic growth uh, main purpose is uh, usually this. And uh, Bolt is the most played card in format and uh, just being able to trick your opponent uh, with it. Uh, it's just very meaningful in a lot of situations and game changing and uh, game winning, of course. So. Um, Storming Entity, uh, if you're playing carefully or like you can easily play this on turn 3 while holding 1 mana protecting your creature from Bolt, making uh, making them use uh, Heat or Solitude, whatever, some better removal. As I already explained, it dodges the Prismatic Ending, which was relevant before, but is even more relevant now when uh, Yes Sky Breach is one of the most played car decks in the format. And... Uh, pretty high tired and uh, that's it okay so it avoids the prismatic ending it avoids a fatal push some de decks also play the push um, some popular ones too and uh, it avoids the push avoids the prismatic ending of course it dies uh, to solitude as any other creature uh, in the format uh, it dies to the unholy heat uh, but can be easily saved from a uh, bolt like all other pros guys you play. Uh, so I think overall, overall I really like uh, the entity much better over the spider dragon. But uh, I'll leave you to decide that for to make the make the deck for your taste and uh, uh, to decide for yourself what you like better. I just wanted to show you there is another option. Uh, you can try a card that. Uh, can maybe beat uh, Sprite Dragon for the uh, main uh, main deck spot in the future. I know Giganta is cool, but as I said, in my opinion, uh, from the ten decks uh, playing the Giganta, uh, it's definitely I think it's definitely weakest in Provis. So uh, also using the Lava Dart uh, a, a lot. Uh, you have bigger problems casting the Giganta than other decks do, so that's another issue. And uh, for all of this, I think Giganta is not... Uh, I think uh, playing the better creature in this case slightly beats uh, the uh, value of having uh, the companion. In this case, so uh, that's it. Uh, hope you like the gameplay. Hope you like the video. Uh, if you want to help the channel, click the subscribe, click the like button. And uh, that's it uh, for uh, this time. Okay, bye.